start by scaling up the default cube. You don't want to delete it because this is what we're going to use to simulate our fluid simulation. Just make it a little bit bigger. And the next what we're going to do is we're going to add the object we want to be our liquid. So I'm just going to use this Suzanne head, move it up a little bit. And next what we have to do is apply our physics objects to our 3D objects. So I'm going to select the box, going to go to the Blender Physics tab, click on Fluid, Type will be Domain, Domain Type will be Liquid, and let's leave Resolution at 32 for now. Next I'm going to click on the Suzanne head, set the type to Fluid, Type, Flow, Flow Type, Liquid, and Flow Behavior is very important. If you want it to be like a faucet, as in a continuous flow of liquid, set, set it to inflow. If you want it to be a drain, meaning any water that touches the head will disappear, set it to outflow. And if you want it to just be like a single droplet of water that's shaped like a monkey head, set it to geometry. Next, go back to our domain object, and we're gonna go down to the very bottom where we have type. Type is very important. If you choose replay, it will bake your render live using the timeline after you hit play. If you set type to modular, you can bake either just the particles in the setting tab, followed by the mesh in the mesh tab, or you can set it to all when you're finished with all your settings and you just want to do one final bake and let your computer sit for a couple days, just set it to type all and you can hit bake all. Before you do that, make sure you check mesh so it actually wraps a mesh around your object. One important thing to note when you're editing the mesh settings is that the upres factor controls the overall resolution of your mesh after it's generated. So if I set this to a value of 1, the mesh will be a, a lower resolution, but you'll see if I turn it up to a value like 2 or 3, you can see it becomes much more subdivided. But it will also take much longer to bake, so make sure you keep that in mind when you're finalizing your render. Um, and make sure you set the frame timings. We're going to set the end time to 100 on the timeline and 100 on the frame on the fluid simulation. With mesh selected, and we're also going to increase resolution divisions to 64, you can go ahead and set type to all and hit bake. And then after letting it sit for a couple seconds, and when it is finished baking, you see we have a complete fluid sim. We're going to go back and hit play, and there you can see our liquid is now being simulated. Now it's time for some extra settings. First off, make sure that when you save your blend file, you actually change the cache folder as well. You can see here it's saved somewhere in my app data folder. You can change your cache file location by clicking on the folder icon and navigating to wherever you want your simulation to be saved. If you want to make your scene more interesting and make it interact with other objects, Simply create a new object, place it in the way of your fluid simulation, make this object a fluid object as well, set type to effector, um, leave effector type to collision, and go back to your domain object, and then simply hit bake again. You can see here now that we have an effector in our scene, if we hit play, the liquid actually flows around it, and even stays on top of it. A couple more useful settings are the border collisions. Basically this enables or disables collision for the domain itself. So I can uncheck um, bottom and this will make it so that when a liquid touches the bottom of the simulation it simply disappears. You can also enable diffusion which basically controls viscosity and surface tension. There's a couple defaults here in the settings, water, oil, and honey. You can simply click on one and it will change the exponent or, and or base to the proper uh, surface tension and or viscosity. So if we go to the bake setting and hit bake all. I also increase the resolution divisions to 64, but you'll see when we hit play here that the liquid kind of acts a little bit more like honey where it doesn't try to rush off completely it kind of sticks around a little bit more and you can see this in the particles you can see how it kind of slowly drips down in contrast to the water particles where you can see they more quickly kind of rush off My final tip is that if you want to quickly make a water simulation, uh, first just create 
an object that you want to simulate, like a cylinder. And what you can do is if you hit F3 and type quick liquid, what it will do is it will automatically create a domain object for you. It will turn the object you had selected into a liquid, and it will also give it a basic material, as you can see here in the shading tab. You can see it gives it um, a glass BSDF, and also it uses volume absorption, so it behaves like real water. And you can see by default it uses the replay type, so if we hit play, it'll actually simulate our fluid. And if we go to the physics tab here, and we enable mesh, go back to the beginning, you can see there's our liquid. And if we go to the material preview, it actually kind of looks like liquid. Of course, this would look much better with a cycles render. So if you want to leave your computer running for another three days, you can leave it running with cycles and get some realistic light bouncing around the water material. So that's it. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed what you saw, please like and subscribe. And if you have any questions or comments, please leave them down below. Thank you.